Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, my name is Obade and I'm a fourth year medical student studying in London. On this channel, I'm going to be talking about the different strategies of leading a more productive and efficient life. And as you'll get to see that it's all about just working smarter, not harder. So the main machine that I use for getting work done is my MacBook Pro. In this video, I'm gonna be going through the 10 best apps, in my opinion, for productivity, getting work done. Whether you're a college student or you're a university student or anything else, you know, this is the video for you. Uh, most of these apps are gonna be Mac apps, but I'll try to find the best Windows alternatives and I'll put them in the description below. So the first app that I'm gonna be going through is PDF Expert. Now, in my opinion, this is the best PDF app out there, period, no arguments. So if you can see here on the screen, um, you could you know do all the basic functions which is annotating text filling out forms signing documents all that nonsense but it just does it in such a smooth way that I've never seen any app come close to it not even Adobe is absolutely rubbish compared to this and you could obviously um, you know edit the pictures resize whatever and something that is so useful is that if you download or someone sends you a PDF you could edit the text within the PDF itself even if it's a book so if you download a, a book PDF version basically you literally can edit the text itself, which is amazing. You could delete certain stuff that you like, you know, I don't want this or change the color or all that kind of stuff, the actual built-in um, text. Um, you could compress, you know, create new PDFs, all that nonsense. You could even, um, let's say you've got multiple documents or multiple lectures and you want to kind of fuse them into one lecture so that it covers the entire module. You could just swap pages, delete pages, and then have it in one single PDF. And obviously this is available on Mac, iPhone, iPad. Unfortunately, it's not available on the Windows. So the next app or apps, should I say, that I'm gonna be going through is Todoist and Things 3. Now these are checklist apps mainly, and you know, there's plenty of research that's shown that, you know, checklists break down big tasks into smaller ones. You're significantly gonna be more productive and more likely to complete your task and less likely to skip step. Now this is available on Mac, iOS, Android, Windows, Windows, everything yeah and this is amazing it literally it's got natural language and it's got you know the use of hashtags and you could do deadlines um, you got subtasks that you could add and you know favorite sections different projects for uni work related all that kind of stuff um, it's got a free version and a paid version the free one to be honest does the job for me I never had to pay for it you could even delegate tasks but I think that one might be paid other than that, you know, I think the free one does plenty of what you would need. You could, you know, see your progress over time, see how productive you're being, which can be kind of a huge motivator to become more productive, I guess. And it's just, to be honest, you should definitely download this and just try it out. Now, the other option or the other competition, you could say, is Things 3. This is exclusively for Mac and iOS. The main differences are the design and slight different things in what you could add here you could you know add certain notes and documents a bit to it it's, it's a bit different so you should probably try out both with this one i don't think there's a free version just straight up paid and it is quite expensive i'll be honest but you know if, if there is a free one or you want to check it out just check both out and see which one you prefer um i use both to be fair and one's for one thing and and the other ones just for other different kind of tasks. So one's uni related, one's more work related that I use. But you could easily just use one if you want and it just does the job amazingly. You could have obviously a schedule here as opposed to Todoist, you can't really have that. And yeah, just check them out and see which one you prefer. So this next app is called Pocket and it allows you to kind of read offline if that makes sense. So whether it's blogs, research articles, whatever you're into reading, um, certain um, voice recordings or videos, you could also download them offline. Now the useful thing about this is that, you know when you ever come across a document or a web page that you wanna read later on, maybe in the train, but you don't wanna kind of keep the tab open, you add it to Pocket and then you could organize that and you could read so it. So if you see here on my screen, it's pretty simple, save the great content from anywhere, read it whenever you want and listen to certain articles. It's as simple as it is and it's for free and it's available on Windows, Mac, you know, iOS, everything, Android. So yeah, you should probably check that one out as well. Now this next app is an app that a lot of people don't realize that they might need. It's a bookmark manager called Raindrop.io. A lot of times when you're a student particularly is that you end up accumulating a lot of tabs because of work you're, you're doing in relation to your college or uni and other you know personal stuff that you open throughout the day and you end up accumulating over 100 tabs probably easily that you've opened and with this one what you do is you organize those tabs and if you can see from my screen here so it's kind of an all-in-one bookmarks manager and then you could organize them based on I don't know I mean here they gave an example of a developer but whatever it is that you're into so it could be tech medicine business um, creative whatever you want to call it and you could uh, color code them you could put them within kind of subsections tags and filters um, it could remove any duplicated links in case you bookmark something twice 
And with this one, I think it's free for a certain number of bookmarks, then it's paid after that. But I don't think it's that expensive. But it's something definitely that's worth investing in early on. Because as time goes by, you end up accumulating a lot of different uh, bookmarks and it'll be extremely difficult for you to find that link that you wanted to go back to, whatever it is that, you know, if it's work related or not. So this next section is the note taking section, probably the most important section for everyone. And if you want me to go more in depth in any of these particular apps, just leave it in the comment below and I'll try and make a video on that. So what I did was I split the different kind of note taking apps based on their best kind of use case scenario. So the first one is Apple Notes, doesn't need any introduction. It's probably the quickest and simplest way of taking a note. If you wanna take a quick note as soon as possible, open the notes or even on Android, your normal kind of note taking app. Um, the second one would be uh, Noted. Now with this one, I'm gonna show you here on my screen. So Noted right here, this is the best one for voice recordings in my opinion. What it does is got a um, intelligent kind of uh, algorithm you could say that deletes any of your pauses so when you pause whilst talking it gets rid of that so it's just straight up the recording that you did and you could just take simple notes you could take handwritten notes and you know hands-free if you've got an apple watch all that kind of nonsense and to be honest it's an amazing app in my opinion the other one i want to talk about is bear and with this one i think it's probably the most minimalist kind of note-taking app and you know if you're into that whole minimalist lifestyle right now minimalism brings freedom and enrichment to your life oh like look it kind of looks very clean you could do a lot with it it's got a lot of these um kind of developer things i don't know what you call them so links and all that kind of stuff and obviously it's available on ios um iphones and stuff like that and it's, it's an amazing app as well you can lock the notes pdfs html's which means aka like website links and stuff everything it's got everything that you might need although it does cost money and it costs about a dollar fifty a month or fifteen dollars annually which is in my opinion a lot of money for students so as opposed to the noted app it's got a free version and then it's got the paid one notion is probably the best app for all case scenarios so it's the most powerful one in my opinion and it's for free which is an amazing thing so if you're on a budget and you'd rather just not pay a single penny this is definitely no question one of the best apps and there's a lot of youtubers whether it's ali abdul or um i think karma medic and any a lot of youtubers who've gone through this app um yeah so it's you could do projects tasks checklists um it's not as good as the checklist apps that i've already mentioned but it does the job and you got documents and all kind of the stuff that you need pretty much everything you'd need and last but not least is noto this is for free as well this is again it's got a kind of a different design theme and you should probably try out it's hard to explain but it's very minimalistic as well it's very simple to use and it's not as complex as notion in my i think notion is a bit of a learning curve with it with this one definitely much easier to use and it's for free it's kind of a mix between bear and notion but it's for free as well so probably download all of them the ones that are for free at least and then try them out and see maybe you want to split them out into okay this one i want to use it for uni this one i use it for my personal notes this one's for any work related stuff that i'm doing try them out see which one works best for you and then decide which one you want to keep the next app is called magnet and as the name kind of suggests it allows you to connect certain windows to certain areas and to organize you know different windows especially if you've got a big monitor as you can see here it really does the job and it's pretty simple just organize the different kind of windows that you have open and you could put certain commands for it as well. Now I think this is for free, but obviously if it is for money, I'll put it in the description and it can be very useful if you want to put certain commands to do immediately a certain function of like split into different kind of screens. So the next app that I want to talk about is Spark and it's a mail app. So I've spent an you know extensive amount of time testing native mail apps, Outlook, Google Mail and a few other mail apps. And so far I found Outlook to be the best until I tried Spark. Now it did have a quite a steep learning curve you could say, but once you get used to it, it is definitely by far the best one and the quickest one. So if I show you here on my screen, you could see that it's got a smart inbox, which is something similar to what Outlook has, which is focused, but this one is way better because it splits it into kind of newsletters so um, any, you know these kind of reoccurring emails that you get every two days about, you know, we've curated this for you, curated that for you. So you could kind of differentiate those from actual important emails. Then you've got seen emails, then you've got um, fil uh, flagged emails and a few other options. This is kind of the main thing that differentiates it from everything else. You've got quick replies, you've got the ability to have kind of responses within an email with different 
people like your colleagues or your students or whatever it is that you work with and you've got templates it's just the design is amazing it's super fast you could put reminders as well so the email kind of comes back into your inbox at a certain date or time as though you had never read it maybe you just you don't want to read it now but in two days so you could snooze it in two days and it'll, it'll hit you back as a new email and obviously it's got all the basics you know, attachments personal personalization sorry creating links and all that nonsense now um as I told you, I've tested a lot. Now, Outlook is an amazing app, but I would definitely rank Spark as definitely a much better app in getting rid. The whole goal is to get rid of your, e your emails and deal with them. This is definitely the best way and the quickest way of doing that. So the next app I want to talk about is Calendars 5. Now, what differentiates this from any normal calendar app on your phone or on your laptop is the fact that it's got that natural language. So you could say, meeting my friend Wednesday at 11 p.m. for a coffee, and it just turns that into a calendar event which is kind of amazing in the way it does it. So if you could see here from my screen, um, first of all, you got all these kind of colors and all, you know, it kind of is this beautiful design. It's done by Riedel, which is known to have quite a lot of nice apps. And the key thing about it is that it's smart. So as you can tell, so going to Starbucks tomorrow at 5 p.m., instead of logging in the time and the date, it shaves off these kind of few seconds that you it takes you to actually put that in, in, put that in manually. And obviously you could invite people, video call integration, so you know Zoom and Microsoft Teams, and especially with the pandemic, this is something that we're using regularly, and it integrates that within it, so it's easy access to immediately open Zoom or whatever it is that you're using. You could share it with others, and it's got the maps. It's got everything that you'd need, basically. Um, iPad, Mac, and iPhone. As I said, I don't think this is available for Android, but if it is, I will let you know. If it isn't, and I'll also let you know about that. So this is another app by Riedel called Scanner Pro, and as you can tell, it's a scanning app. Now, with the way the pandemic is going, everything's turning into digital, and about two years ago, most universities turned paperless, and some are you know, becoming paperless, especially colleges and schools. But you know, every now and then you might get a paper or a book that you want to scan and turn into digital content so you could access on your laptop or your iPhone. And this is the best app in my opinion for that. So as you can see here, it just simply scans the app. I mean, there's not much to it more than that, but I think it's definitely, I've tried on many different scanning apps and this is definitely the best one. It's for free and you can scan also like invoices and you know, edit them black and white, all that kind of different color schemes. And something that is extremely useful is that it's got something called an OCR text, which means it extracts the text from the picture that you took and it will literally give it to you as written text that you could copy, edit, share, which can be hugely useful, especially if you're taking a, uh, a picture of a book. You could get that text from the book without having to type it, which can be you know, very useful, as I said. So last but not least, this is for all you visual learners out there. If you like using mind maps quite a lot, this is definitely the best software out there. So it's called Miro. And there is MindMeister as well, which I'll put in the description below, but this is probably the best one out there. If you can see my screen here, it's got templates as well, so in case you don't want to make anything from scratch and different frameworks, an infinite canvas, so you're never limited basically, and you've got widgets and stuff like that. It, you could collaborate with people as well, so they could kind of contribute to the mind map. You could in, embed videos, comments, messages, share, all, all kinds of stuff. This is actually way more powerful than a simple mind map for the record. And anyone who's into like product design, maybe development, coding, all that stuff, but it, it does the job basically. Now, if you sign up for free, I think you get three up to three mind maps for free. After that, it becomes paid. So you could obviously share or download the mind map, save it or print it and then delete it. But, you know, if you want to do the paid version, you could do that as well. And the other one is MindMeister, which I think is either a one of cost or is for free completely. But I'll put that in the description below. So thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a thumbs up and click on the subscribe button if you want to see more content like this. Um, if you have any videos that you want to suggest, just leave them in the comments below and I'll try to do them if I can. And see you guys in the next video.